uh, he works with us here at the city, and he's going to be uh, walking us through a presentation on Civic Center Public Art. Uh, I think Alvin, you said it was okay to interject with questions at some point. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so what, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just quickly show you uh, the project, got a lot of slides. I'm going to go through them. I think, you know, since it's a small group, feel free to interject, ask questions, and be happy to answer them. And then uh, we'll get to the end if you have more questions. Perfect. Okay, Alvin, if you'd like to go ahead and get started. Wonderful. Um, you want to do just a quick, maybe an introduction? Uh, I'm Alvin Wong, the project manager for the design of the project. And then uh, Nathan, you probably just met possibly. Yeah, I, was, uh, I work here in the city manager's office, and I'm also um, the uh, admin on the uh, RFP. And then uh, Lupi? Maria. No, no you're, <laughs> you're, what's your I'm the graphic designer there. for this. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> slash videographer today. Right. <laughs> okay. We still want to know who you are. Oh, I'm Kara Reddick, I'm a deputy city manager. And then I think Nan and uh, Cheryl both, uh, you probably know who. We just met them today, so if we could just go through one more time. Uh, uh, and, uh, and, uh, yes, I'm chair of the Committee of the Arts, uh, Nan Mahan. Okay. And I'm Cheryl Bryce, vice chair of the Committee of the Arts. Okay. And we also just met Judy. Judy. I'm the peanut gallery. <laughs> <laughs> Along with you. Okay. <laughs> um, my name is Renee Via, and. Um, it's, I, I got this this message last night. I didn't realize I wasn't signed up for the newsletter and all that stuff, so I'm signed up now, so I shouldn't miss. I was going to come on Thursday, and I emailed you. It's yeah. Monday, Tuesday. Um, I'm a teacher in Elk Grove. I've been teaching for 20 years. Uh, Isabel Jackson Elementary School, and um, I've uh, been in the classroom for a long time. Um, I just got into the computer. I'm a computer resource teacher now, so I do a lot of the video, graphic design, that kind of stuff, but I do still teach them. Um, my students, I see every kid once a week, and um, um, I'm also in the Army Reserve, so I do graphic design. I do, um, I'm a multimedia illustrator in the Army. I love it. There's, there's no better MOS in the military. Um, so um, I've been there a while as well. So um, uh, my father's a step on VSO. So <clears throat> we painted a lot of murals with my dad. Uh, I think you, you, some of you know him, and. Um, very active in the Chicano community in the, in the 60s, and, and he's got several murals he's painted downtown. Um, the uh, Metamorphosis, a big four story mural on the Macy's parking lot, and the uh, J Street uh, Tunnel to Old Sacramento. Uh, that's one of his, and a few others in the area, all the way down to San Diego, right? Chicano Park. And so, my brother and I have been painting with my dad ever since we were little. So, we kind of feel like maybe now it's our turn. You know, maybe it's our turn to leave our dad out of it, and maybe we should, um, you know, be painting murals on our own because I don't think we've 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 done you know a big one on our own yet. But we're excited about all these opportunities for art, public art in Elk Grove, and Sacramento's <laughs> had it for a long time. Now it's time for Elk Grove. Just keep pushing it, and um, so uh, very exciting. So Nathan, yeah, uh, Nathan, I'm also to Nathan. <laughs> Um, artist, uh, teacher, and mainly here to support Renee today. It's, you know, it's all kind of new to me, but um, anxious to uh, for the opportunities. Wonderful. All right. Great, great. Yes. Right in. Awesome. Okay. Great. So uh, today is the topic is the uh, public art at the new uh, Civic Center, the post Civic Center. And uh, this is an overview of. Um, the design, the ultimate design, as well as what we're installing now in terms of the, the extent of the project. And then um, also uh, going over, giving you an idea of the uh, inspirations for the design. So, with this set, and we'll move to the next slide. So, that's the uh, agenda. We're going to talk about design teams, and uh, feel free to uh, research them, reach out to them. Um, they're uh, very reputable firms, great firms. Um, and then we'll go a little bit into the project information design inspiration. We'll look at the public arts plan exhibit, which is in the RFP packet. And we'll talk a little bit about construction and the progress, current progress, and we'll have some more questions in the end there. I guess we just cooperate a little bit. There we go. So those are our three design teams. <coughs> um, the Civic Center common site and the master plan. Uh, it's by the SWA group, and they are a landscape architecture firm uh, out of the Bay Area. 
And then the Aquatic Center is designed by ELS Architecture and Urban Planning out of Berkeley, California. And then the Community Senior Center with Veterans Memorial Hall is uh, by Group 4 Architecture Research and Planning, and they're out of um, South San Francisco. And this new uh, Civic Center site, I wanted to just kind of show you the, you probably already know, but for those that uh, may be from out of town, the black dot right there is the location of the project, and it's uh, very central to the to this city of Elk Grove. And this zooms in on the site. And the uh, streets are Bighorn, um, north and south to the to the west side, and then on the north side, uh, the east and west street is Civic Center Drive, and then down to the south is bounded by Lots Parkway, uh, with uh, Cosumnes Oaks High School right across the street there. And then uh, we're bounded by residential uh, developments to the east and to the uh, west. Uh, and then on the north side is uh, some open uh, property, uh, mostly undeveloped. The city owns that uh, 20 something acres to the north. It's all commercial development. And then the falls uh, is right about there. And you'll see the site constraints include a water treatment plant and a little well right here. So this is the ultimate master plan. Not everything is funded, but I wanted to share with you the vision of how this ultimately would look. Um, so what you see is a site design with, the, with all majority of the dense uses, the, the, the bigger buildings to the north, sort of on the northern edge against Civic Center Drive. And uh, with the aquatics, because it's a lower scale, a little bit further to the south. And then as the site moves, as you move south, southward, the site begins to sort of change into a less dense development, becomes more park-like, and ultimately becomes actually a park. And this is a, a pedestrian-oriented campus uh, design. So if you notice, there's actually a large parking lot on the west side, and then and a smaller parking lot on the east side. And they don't ever cross or connect by design, so that this entire area in between, all the way down here, all the way around, is uh, pedestrian oriented. You don't have to worry about cars. You sort of go into this uh, more structured uh, design on the north, and as you filter down, it becomes more organic, so the trails become a little bit looser without, without form. And this is organized on um, three arcs, uh, arc promenades of pedestrian arcs, and there's one of them right there ultimately takes you down to the future mm -hmm. development. There's a second one that's sort of known as the commons right here, takes you through. And there's a there's a great outdoor area right here that's about 100 feet wide. And I don't recall the length of it, but it's big enough to actually uh, accommodate more than 100 uh, pop-up tents for various uh, uh, events and functions. So it's sort of like the outdoor civic plaza. And then it's uh, bounded on the side with a, a great um, uh, fountain spray ground. It's actually a, a really, really nice one that is uh, flush to the ground. It has different color lights, and it actually can, each head can be controlled individually. So, so to there's a lot of there. Yeah, yeah. Good to see yeah. One. yeah. And then uh, this arc sort of leads into the uh, aquatics project right here. There's three bodies of water. We'll go into a little bit more detail later. I just wanted to point that out right there. And then this is part of our our, our funded. Uh, Project and then number two, the this uh, community senior center is actually part of our project too. A little bit of a this, this isn't here anymore. This is actually the old veterans hall, and it's actually rolled into this project here. So what you'll see, what's here actually here in the enlargement is actually going to be a veterans park of some sort. So there'll be a flag display, picnic tables, barbecue, and things like that. Um, but as the site, uh, as as you move further down into the site, it becomes more trails, and you'll you'll notice that the, the walkways are less structured and meanders. There's a great metal in the future down here. Um, park elements, I think, uh, riper riparian habitat. This is so the remnants of the old uh, wetlands here, and, and maybe the idea is that that gets uh, possibly uh, restored or some form integrated into this uh, site. Uh, there's a couple of future buildings. This is the. Uh, 
uh, Children's uh, Discovery Museum down the road and a little science center um, down on the side. And then a lot of nature trails, probably some informative signs, and some other elements um, down the road. And then we'll, we'll go to. Let's go. There we go. So I zoomed in a little bit. There's that water treatment facility right there, and we're zoomed in. And this is what's fun. This is what's um, uh, uh, funded in this first part of the, the project. And as we zoom in here, you'll notice that there, there's the Veterans Park right there. You'll see the little dots right there are, are the flag displays. Uh, the U.S. flag and the military branches, and there's picnic tables and so forth there. And as we zoom in, you could uh, you could see a little bit more detail of the Fountain Spray Ground number five right here. And then you see these little darker color. They're actually built in tables. There's loose seating, umbrellas, tables, chairs, and other elements that would activate the space. Um, this uh, community center, senior center, and veterans hall has a bunch of outdoor seating umbrellas. Uh, there's a, a fire pit over here, right there. Bocce ball, right there. And, uh, and then there's actually a little bit of a pop-up tent city for the swimming crowd. And this is a rendering taken um, from near the future library, sort of in the upper uh, north uh, west corner corner you see the spray grounds to your right a little bit there that's the aquatics building further down this just looks down this the promenade arc right here and to the left you'll see the future library and the senior community center is right there probably get a better view of it in the next uh, image here so this is senior uh, community and veterans uh, hall it has a cafe outside with some outdoor seating We've got these great wide concrete walkways on other, either side, which could be used for a variety of things, including the same, the same rendering. So this would be what it would look like with some pop-up tents for, say, a farmer's market. Um, and you, you would get them on both sides, too, so you'll see some on the other side here. And then it's sort of joined by a, a great lawn that could be used for a variety of uh, activities. And the lawn is where some of the future art pieces are going to be located. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> and then this is some of the just uh, some of the imagery that we see. Everything we've seen is a rendering. So uh, this is uh, uh, some imagery that would apply to the design of our project here. We see some uh, activity uh, that could be lawns could be used for outdoor seating, umbrellas, um, walkways, a little more structured. As you get further down in the site, they're a little more loose and less structured. Uh, naturalized landscaping, a lot of this would be uh, further to the south. Um, this is that sort of wetlands riparian habitat. And then, uh, of course, the, the trees on this project, uh, uh, we actually went to great lengths to save uh, a handful of uh, very mature valley oaks out there. We'll get a chance to see that a little bit later. Um, and I want to also mention that this project actually has 200 new oak trees that are actually of significant size. And then this is uh, some imagery of what uh, is more located along the commons. Um, some overhead lighting, this would be between the, in the commons area, between the uh, aquatics building and the uh, community center, where you would have the majority of the, the loose and structured seating. Um, I get fire pits as gathering spots. Uh, here's an image of, this is actually a piece of artwork at a different project, but we see that as part of this whole commons uh, and outdoor space. And we actually have a platform outside just north of the fountain for a small band that could play when the fountain's turned off. Um, once again, bocce ball right there. And this is sort of some of the uh, visions for the seating um, outdoors. So we'll have a lot of loose um, furniture and chairs and some colored and some uh, different materials. Uh, wood comes into comes into play in a lot of these um, organic type materials, uh, umbrellas and, and uh, patio tables and so forth. And this is the uh, 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 plan of the aquatics facility. 
the aquatic facility has uh, uh, three bodies of water. It has a 50 meter Olympic pool right here, um, and it has a smaller six lane lessons uh, pool right here. And then we have a slide structure, a recreational pool with a lazy river and a zero depth entry here, like you've seen a lot of. And then a uh, nice outdoor plaza, uh, uh, outdoor spaces here for lounging. And also uh, what's shown in, in this little uh, hatched or a, a dashed line is actually a, a signature canopy and it sort of organizes this building, uh, the elements organize around that. So it kind of marks the entry, brings you in, provides shade. One thing I should mention is that this pool is actually a sunk down almost five feet to form a, a terrace seating around it. So it's almost like a little mini, mini uh, stadium. Better view here. So this is an overhead view. You can see the fountain spray grounds outside. And this is the building here, and then this is the entry, and then this trellis element just runs straight through here and sort of bisects the building. And, and this is the major circulation for uh, for this project inside. And then this is a uh, photo of that entry uh, from the pedestrian eye level here. So you walk in here, it's secure. It's a secured facility, so you'll have some fence enclosures that you've got to walk through after you pay uh, and the transaction windows here. Materials, um, this is actually a very nice uh, sort of sand yellow color um, uh, architectural block wall. And one thing I'd like to point out, and you'll probably see a little bit better as, as we go to the uh, aerial or the, the animation, is that these are, uh, this is the architect sort of a, uh, kind of an idea that sort of lets the building um, uh, represent a little bit of the water, shimmering effect of water. So these are actually custom light fixtures that are inset into the concrete. And as you, as these, this pattern goes on, sort of a random pattern, but they get a little bit lighter as you go, sort of like uh, when the drop of water hits, hits a, a water, you have sort of those, these little rings that go out and dissipate. So it's kind of a imagery that that imagery um, is used for those lights there. And then this is the plan of the building to the north, the community center, with the senior center and veterans hall. And to the right is the wing for the senior center and the veterans hall. And then to the left is the, the main hall uh, that's uh, uh, accessible by the public, could be rented by the public for various functions. Um, it's joined together by a common lobby here. And we'll get a little bit better view of that, but this is all glass here, all glass here, and quite a bit of glass actually all around the building. But what I was trying to say is that it's actually a see-through lobby. So even from the street, you look through and you'll actually see the, 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 the suspended piece right here through the lobby. And I want to mention that this is the, the mural on the inside. This is a solid mural wall on the inside there. This is taken uh, from the Civic Center side as you walk down and look down towards the main entry there. You can kind of see the, the uh, glass and entry on the Commons side. And to the left is the Senior Center and, and uh, Veterans Wing. And to the right is the main hall. Um, the, these, these buildings are designed to actually let you look and have glimpses into the commons area from the street. So um, this main hall actually has a large window in the middle there, a door system that actually opens up to the outside. So you, if you have a live band playing, you can actually have additional seating on the outside. And people can look through and see, see inside. And then you can do the same here, look through the hall here down into the commons. A little closer view of that. This is just zoomed up a little bit. Um, and this is the, the main lobby with the suspended piece would be. And this is the just moving to the to the west a little bit. This is the out the, the view of the main hall facing the Civic Center Drive. And this is that window system that would be able to be opened up um, if there were if there's actually a little platform. That's on both sides, the inside of the building and the outside of the building. So when chooses to do so, you can actually open that up and, and have an event that uh, also takes place on the outside and utilizes the out outdoor patio space. 
And then this is the view from the common side, so opposite the street. This is that common, as you've seen a few renderings earlier on. This is what this building looks like. So there's a cafe um, here. This is the main entry that we were just viewing from the opposite side a moment ago. And then further to the right here is the main entry to the senior center wing. And so you see there's a lot of uh, uh, um, activation of the outdoor space, especially along the edge, the southern edge of this edge of the building against the commons. So plenty of um, loose seating, there can be built-in seating. Um, the bocce ball course is, is year-round, that'll be built in. There's a fire pit. Let's see, there's a fire pit um, right over here. There's the fire pit right there. So it's actually quite a big fire pit, probably get. 20 people around there. Then, uh, these are some of the materials that were selected. A lot of it is earthy, earthy colors, earthy material, sand uh, based uh, brick, um, clay uh, native to our area. So those are all um, uh, materials that are, are found either here or not too far away. And then some accents um, include terracotta. We have a great terracotta manufacturer just north of here in Lincoln, as you're probably aware. Um, and, and of course, wood and brick, too. And these are just some zoomed up, uh, sort of the palette that's been adopted from this um, <coughs> master plan, the city center master plan. You can select from a multitude of those. And then here's an aerial view taken from the corner. And that just the buildings to the left are haven't been designed, so they're just shown as a mass. But if you come up here, you'll notice how big the space. There's the fountain to the left. And there's the entry. And if you look at the the lights, they kind of dissipate as it goes south along that curved wall. This is that band platform right here to the left. And this is the commons here. And this is a little different rendering for the for the community center. So the on the left edge is the aquatics. You'll see the commons in the middle. It's the main entry to the commons in, from the commons into this the community center. And then there's the, the roof, the high roof on the left, that's the main hall. You see all the outdoor seating and the walkway along the south edge. This is the service side. And then there's the main hall that opens out into the uh, street side. And there's additional uh, outdoor space for tables and chairs. And this is the main entry with the senior center veterans hall wing to the left. It's the drop off area right in the front there. That's the, the classrooms for the senior center. right about where the Veterans Park is. On this edge right here is a drop off for the, for the small parking lot. You can see the flags the parking. So construction schedule. Um, you probably are already aware that the site has been uh, rough graded and they're out there, they're about to put in pipes and so forth. The commons and uh, common site and aquatic center will be done May 25th of next year, about a year from now, a little less than a year. And the Community Senior Center and Veterans Memorial Hall is scheduled to be, to be in construction in the spring of 2018. So we're working on the final design right now. We'll go into permitting soon, complete about a year later in spring of um, 2019. Then what you see in the red there is what's currently under construction right now. And then what you see in the blue there is uh, has been graded, but uh, that won't start construction until spring of 2018. And this is taken about a month ago from the north parcel. So there's your Veterans Park right here. And there's the driveway into the small parking lot here. You can take uh, begin to see the uh, the early stages of the sunken Olympic pool right here, and then the rec pools is brown one here, and then the lessons pools right there. You can 
can kind of see the uh, pedestrian arcs that come through right there. And also over here, and then the beginning of the large parking lot here. I want to point out here that these are the trees that we've saved um, uh, to, and, and we've designed around. So these these up front here are Valley Oaks, and the, the Civic Center, or the Community Center, uh, was designed in an L shape to actually respond to the site and work around. So um, we have these great trees that will remain and be part of our project when it's done. And we're going to plant 200 additional trees, same kinds that will be not quite as big, but about as big as I think you can buy them. And then uh, this exhibit is the location uh, of the art pieces in the RFP. Um, you've seen this, and we've talked about uh, the lobby right here. The, the uh, ceiling hung piece inside these are the two interior pieces and then the mural here and then we've got the, the outdoor pieces um, out here and with that I just wanted to see if you had any questions that was that was the project the overview and that's John that's a beautiful plan uh, so it's, it's just gonna be amazing um, The outdoor on that last slide, the outdoor spots that you chose, are those stuck right there, or can they be maybe moved to a slightly different area along that lot, or is that pretty much where we'd like to see them? I think that that was what was yeah. recommended by the Committee for the Arts, and, and Council approved it. I think, though, given the scale, I mean, um, this is this is a, a hundred feet across. So, uh, so there's a little bit of latitude to move, move, I think, within this area. The thing that would probably constrain it a little bit is that um, all the underground utilities that we're coordinating right now, we're working around their sites so that um, so that these could exist where they're shown, about where they're shown. How many structures are in that series in the comments? Uh, oh, uh, oh the art, art pieces. Art pieces so, so uh, these number five are the, the number fives are the sculptural pieces, and there's four of them right there, right there, and then there's one right here under the big existing oak tree, and then there's one right here at the drop off area, and then there are two additional pieces, the the iconic sculptural piece right right here, and this is the uh, correct me if I'm wrong, this is the interactive piece too, I think lighting and. It's uh, meant to be interactive. It's it's, it's the nicest uh, or the biggest budget piece, and it's right in the middle uh, where any, everybody passing through can take advantage of it. And then uh, number four here is a little bit more front and center. This is the uh, kinetic sculpture. This is the one that um, oh, yeah. we've been referring to as Delta Breeze, and as you're yeah. where Delta Breeze is a great thing um, in our in our community here, especially yesterday, right, last night. <laughs> And then there are two interior pieces we talked about earlier. I thought, uh, I thought we had decided not to do a fire pit. Um, I was a little surprised too. I didn't, yeah. I didn't know that was a. Community. Yeah, the fire, it, it was a. I think when we first presented it to you, we weren't sure if it was in the budget, I think is what it was. Uh, I think the committee found it uh, useless. It's not. It's not going to be an art. Yeah, piece. it's not an art piece. It's, it's not. Actually it's not part of the art component. It's not part of the art. No. And where's it located? Because, okay, uh, because the usually the those things pretty soon right. they're unattended. If there's no fire, right? And they could be a hazard. Children put their fingers in it. I. I, I just. Um, where's it located? Right, right there. Right there. The, Wait, I'm, I'm lost. Oh, right. Yeah, there. right there. You see where. It, hmm. It's sort of like a gathering table. If you if you can. <laughs> Imagine it's a basically a long rectangular um, table with an opening in the middle where the fire is. So there's a little bit of a um, slight space in between, and there's seating all around it. And so we've got some. Uh, it, it's it's not part of your art budget, but it's something that we we included, and it worked out as far as as far as the construction budget goes. Uh, as long as it's not ours, we don't have a lot to say. But if it were if it were ours. We had voted against that. Uh, also, I would vote to continue on all the uh, coverings uh, for the tables and all because uh, people want shade, and it looks like you have a lot of it there. And I think that looks uh, 
at plus 200 more trees. Uh -huh. So I think it's all very good. Uh, I also remember, however, and it didn't seem like it in the picture, maybe I just didn't see it, but every platform has to have a covering. It's so the people are yes. not speaking or, or yes. playing or whatever. Uh, and everybody around them is in the shape that they're in the sun. Yeah, absolutely, Nan. So let me, it, did, it, it wasn't shown here, but we do have a, um, actually a canopy structure over, let's go over here, to the, to the little platform just north of the fountains. We do have a canopy structure, and it's actually a very nice uh, steep, uh, steel structure, but with the um, fabric canopy that you can remove during the winter time because you want some sun in there. Okay. Uh, but we do have that absolutely right over here. And uh, there's going to be more platforms, and they will all be covered, right? Yeah, this one has a trellis. This one has a trellis to it, but this one I think has uh, has the. Uh, Amenity of some nice mature trees on and it's north facing too. So uh, as I recall the trellis is uh, behind them so that it keeps the sun off the, from the back. Correct. Off the Correct. back. Yep. Which is something people don't normally think about unless they're the one standing up there. Yeah, absolutely. So it's it's right mounted right on the building. And, and I think you um reiterated that, that there would be uh Electrical outlets on all the platforms and, and in other yes. places. Yes, there, there's the canopy over the, the platform on the north side. Yeah. yeah, and then we do, we actually have more than just one floor. We have a 100 amp panel, so if you want to rock out with a band, <laughs> you could do that. Good. You would be surprised. I'm uh, not surprised. <laughs> <laughs> Question uh, I noticed that there are uh, like art announcing most of the major areas and approaches. I didn't notice anything by the aquatics. There, there is nothing inside the aquatics. Um, Within that area of the... Yeah, because it's a fenced-in area. Let me see if I can go. Uh, so, let me actually get to the aquatics a bit. There it is right here. So, the, the aquatics is um, it's a little hard to see, but this is the this is the outside wall of the aquatics right here, the building. Just follow my cursor there, mm -hmm. and then it comes across, and then right here it becomes a a wrought iron fence, I believe, right here. And it's an eight feet high fence, and by by code we're required to um, right. secure the pool area, and it comes all the way down here, and and then it comes across here, and then it comes back, and it ties back to a block wall here. Mm -hmm. so this is again, once again, the building right. Here and it's uh and um, I think this might have been discussed in one of our earlier meetings, but not necessarily discussed out. But I think that it was uh it was the idea is that because you had to you have to pay to get to get inside the aquatics to use the facility, mm -hmm. and the fact that it's a sort of a more um, uh, a wet environment with chlorine and some other chemicals, it probably wasn't the best place for public art. Um, right. And you could then, and public art is free and meant to be enjoyed, I think. And that's what was the discussion. Can you, can you tell me what you said there, there was a sculptural cover on the recreational pool of some sort? Um, not the pool, the, the cover's over the platform, the, the performing platform right here. And it's kind of a sculptural piece, you said? Um, yeah, I wouldn't really call it art, but it's a very nice looking piece. It's sort of, it's a steel um, trellis structure that um, has the ability to, um, we have the fabric, the, this umbrella fabric that gets pulled tight around there. I think we looked at a lot of different options and we, we um, I think the committee, if I recall correctly, we even talked about some more metal type, but, but the band's playing wasn't the best acoustics. So I think that, um, <coughs> The fabric. the fabric and a steel structure was better, and then during the during the winter time when you might want some sun in there, then um, you have the ability to remove the fabric. Okay. Can, can you show me once again where the fountain is? Yeah, the fountain is right. Yeah, I, I like the look of that fountain. It's actually it's trying to Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is what we were trying to describe. It's it's actually a very large area. Maybe I can go to the rendering. It might show it a little bit better. 
it, it actually is a very, very large area. Um, like if I just played this animation. You can look at the scale of the people relative to the, to the actual concrete area. Now, I'll turn around here so you can see it. But the fountain is a multi-use space. So the thought is, is that when, when uh, these fountains, these jets are actually flushed to the concrete, and you just see a very small orifice, um, and uh, what happens is that during the summertime, uh, you, could, you, when you could turn the fountain off and the water drains back into the to this holding vault under, under the ground and you let the sun, if there's no standing water, you just let the sun dry out the concrete, you put seating out there and that seating could be the, could serve the, as a seating for a bannock performance, yeah. yeah, or a ban or something all on that platform. And it's not too hot. So. We can always turn the fountain back on. Oh yeah, you can do that. That'd be kind of cool, actually. <laughs> it sounds kind of kind of weird, but it might. Oh, um, performing art, right? Performing art would be nice. Yeah, yeah. Although you don't want them to be, uh, uh, you know, tortured in the sun. But it's a multi. The, the intent was that it is a multi-function plaza. So. You could probably even put a portable tin up there if it came to that. A absolutely. I think uh, we we talked about that as well, too. And, and uh, the, the the tents are really arranged along the, the hundred or so tents are along along these these uh, these arcs here and on the other side. But but certainly if the fountain wasn't on, I mean, this could be the focal point of, of uh, a farmer's market. I mean, you could set up. Just about anything there. It's, it's really a large multi use open plaza. And the fountain is, is recycled, the water is recycled, right? It, it is recirculated, yes. Yeah. So there's a, there's actually a huge holding tank underneath, um, and it gets um, it gets cleaned and purified like, like a commercial pool, and then gets uh, sprayed up and then it just goes back in. Yeah. And then we have the ability to uh, control it so we can turn it off at any time, whatever schedule. It's actually got. Um, RGB lights inside the fountain too, so you can actually um, during Christmas time if you wanted to arrange a performance with whatever color lights, I mean you can you can do that. That'd be big. And yeah, Fourth of July, you can have red light. Absolutely, red light. absolutely. Yeah. There, there are forty seven jets, and there's spa there's yeah. spaced about I believe about eight feet in one direction and five and a half in the other direction. Absolutely, sky's the limit. This is this is something that we were trying to describe to you, and I think we didn't do a good job of yeah. it. But um, that you could you could do a lot of things with it. You could have a contest for um, high school kids to come up with a pattern and something, and the winning selection could be played for a month. I mean, there's a lot of opportunities that you can engage the community with something like that. Thanks, so I have some questions for you. Uh, we're we're videoing this, so um, sure. I was hoping that maybe we could have a little bit of dialogue on some information. That what are some things that you would like a potential artist to know about a specific piece, or that, sure. would, that you think would be structurally helpful for them to know that perhaps you could share it, and we can go ahead and have it posted. Sure, it might be you know, sure. No, I think that's a great, great question. Um, I think that uh, it would be nice uh, to know from the artist. What um, you know, like if, if it's, for example, the supporting piece in the lobby, we would want to know, um, you know, how heavy it is and what types of support in order for us to coordinate the the, the structure of the building to accept that. So that would be piece. interior B, right? In the wall correct. Room. Okay. Correct. And that and for the outdoor ones, I think it is it isn't as critical, but it would be nice to know if um, they have heavy foundations or footings. Um, whether they need lights, we we do have conduit in preparation or in anticipation of this uh, public art. We do have electrical conduits out there, but it would be n uh, nice to know what 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 type of electricity. If it's one hundred and twenty, two two seventy seven, if they need lights underneath there. Um, if the if the feature uh, the art piece um, needs any other sort of utilities to prop to that to that location, because right now we haven't poured the concrete, so. They need a drain or something. We we can add it um, 
there, but uh, it gets a little more difficult when the concrete gets built and poured in place. So those are the things we want to know what kind of utilities and support they need um, uh, on their piece, and we'd be happy to work with them to, to get them what they need. Also, I would imagine uh, how they intend to transport the item to the actual site. Sure. Would be good information as well. Sure. The mural, particularly the one in uh, Interior B, can be pretty large. Sure. So how they intend to get that in there, or sure. they want to do it in segments or not? Yeah, or or they paint it on the wall. I mean, it will work with them. Um, I think I'm less concerned about being able to bring it in um, to the community center. I think there's quite a few uh, quite a few double doors and large openings that they can bring it in. Um, but uh, on the exterior pieces, uh, it. We'd like to we'd like to know how high generally how tall. I know there's parameters in here, but we'd like to know if, if there's a submission that um, that it defines the envelope a little bit better for us because we'd like to coordinate. Uh, say for example, the new trees. Sometimes if this piece is a little bit taller, we may want want to adjust some of the trees uh, to allow this piece to be more prominent and so as not to um, conflict with landscaping. So all that all that information really relates to structural and utilities. So, yeah, and size. Okay. I think we also want to point out that some of the pieces have specific themes that the committee for the arts was interested in seeing, and there are two different time frames for the RFP based on um, kind of the location of it. So if it's in the community center, it has a little bit. Uh, the RFP is still due at the same time, but the process moving forward is a little bit different. Yeah, the inst final installation. The final later. installation. Uh, is there a copy of the RFP available? Then Alvin, just just as a recap, you talked about the uh, the future of the, the senior center and the that that, that would be we anticipate when do we anticipate starting construction? So that one we anticipate starting construction in uh, spring of 2018. Spring of 2018, yeah, with about, about a year, a little bit more than a year uh, construction duration. Okay, so. just mention that because a couple of the pieces are actually linked in that one. Absolutely. So there would be different. Timelines for those particular submissions. Yes. And we're just saying that so it's. <laughs> sure. A question was any of, of this whole design here, or this, this, this whole thing, was any of it um, modeled after the, the new arena? Uh, just the way that they ask for artists and they have the different type murals and sculptures and hanging pieces because the, the new arena has. Has almost done it the same way, um, and we went through that process um, of submitting for for some ideas in, in there, and it was a uh, it's a big it's a big turnout, lots of artists, and um, so so um, it, the it, it feels like that, and I like that because there was so many opportunities, and um, some themes that they had asked for, and others, what do you got? So I don't know. I like it, and uh, just wondering if it had been modeled after that at all. The whole arena. I, I'm not. I'm not I sure. This okay. came straight from the committee. I think the committee decided this is how um, they would like to see it, um, and it might be just uh, by coincidence. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's a lot like. Well, that, uh, so. are you talking about the, when they did the call for artists? Is that what you're talking oh, about? Yeah. That's a pretty standard uh, uh, thing for most uh, art uh, uh, in most cities. That, that have some um, um, project. It's pretty standard that they do to have a variety, a hanging piece, an outdoor yeah, piece, right. a smaller piece, and, the, and it goes to the uh, to the art uh, committee or commission uh, of that city. Okay. So, yeah. I saw an image of a skateboarder. Are we, are you, is the idea to invite skateboarders or find ways to, 
to 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 keep them, you know, away. I saw the image. You can see that skateboarder in there. Is that open to um, you know, in high schoolers coming through, or are we are you adding things that would um, discourage? Them? I I think generally speaking, uh, we we've not made a. Uh, uh, delineation in the, in the commons as far as bicyclists and um, skateboarders or, or even pedestrian traffic because uh, on all the entries we will have bike racks but I think when it um, we obviously don't want uh, skateboards running into people or, or we're not trying to encourage skateboarders to come and ride the uh, seat walls or anything like that so I, so I think it's a it's a fine line we, we don't like the idea of having those um, those devices, I think they look a little bit funny, and they always seem to seem to look like a retrofit. So I think maybe just from an operational standpoint, we like to maybe manage a little bit differently to to uh, encourage certain uses and not encourage other uses. From this vantage point, would it be possible maybe a mouse over a potential location for our just kind of in this purview? Yeah, let's see this one. It's a little bit dif difficult, but the, the, right the signature piece would be about right there. And then I think there's another piece um, right here, or maybe we're, we're standing right here. Actually, no, not right there, because that's a fact. Let me just go back to the, um, go back to the artist. So uh, let's just use it. This is our spray ground right here. And so we're going to have a piece. That view was probably taken about right where okay. number five is. So we were probably standing that perspective viewpoint. We're probably standing right where the art piece, this art piece is. And then as we look further down across this little patch right here, uh, there's another piece there. And then, and then the one that's more central is right here. So let's go back to the rendering. So this one, a little bit hard to see, but this is, I believe this is the central area. So there is a piece uh, probably right underneath, um, let's see, this is the cafe. So it'd probably be a piece right about there in the middle. Then this is the same view. So yeah, so that's the large tree right there. So the piece would be right behind this person standing right here. That would be uh, that central. And then this is the, we're standing about where one piece is, and the sculptural piece is, is about right here. There's another one that's about right there in that patch right there. And then further down is where the uh, more central iconic piece is, uh, probably in line with this uh, products building, right about down there. And then uh, since this is a fountain, it's just outside of the view, but the Delta Breeze one would be right, right about out here. Thank you. And for the benefit of um, anyone who may have joined us in progress, uh, what we've done so far is uh, we've discussed the, the basic, uh, basic, the general layout of the concept ideas for the Civic Center, and we've now moved into the question uh, component of this discussion. So if you have any questions, uh, particularly regarding uh, this project, um, Mr. Wong, Alvin Wong here is the uh, lead architect. Okay. Are those sculptures designed to be in the grassy patch or the cement area? I think we would. I think we would work with you uh, okay. to do it, but I think that we'll probably have to have some access to it uh, from an accessibility standpoint. Yeah. Okay. Um, Any time frame on all that other? Area that's not going to be developed right now. Yeah, there is none. It's unfunded right now. Yeah, so I think it's a great layout. We've always wanted to kind of see what it looks like ultimately. Um, but right now, um, none of it outside of what we just seen, none of the other parts are, 
are currently funded. Do you know what the, um, the fence is like around that um, that water treatment plant? Is it just uh, so this uh, plant's actually a block wall? Uh, so it's out there now. This actually this plant's out there now. This this is a complete uh, CMU block wall. I think it's about eight feet high on, on all sides, and then they have some gates along the Civic Center that you can get in. You can see that now. This one, the well site, actually doesn't have any uh, fence around it. So as part of our project, we're going to go ahead and landscape around it. We still need to maintain uh, vehicle access for them to maintain the well. And so, uh, but but our idea is just to let that building uh, just sit the way it is, but landscape nicely. The one down there. Yeah, right. The one up there. I'm just thinking about that long, two long walls on that water treatment plant up there. Are they going to be covered with shrubbery and trees? Yeah. Or will they be visible? We'll have land we'll have landscaping. I think you'll you will see it. yeah, you will see it, but the landscapes usually, even when they're mature, they don't the ground cover and sort of the shrubs, they probably don't get much higher than uh, four five feet. And then we have uh, trees along the edge here, so I'm sure you'll be able to see that wall, um, even down the, down the road, years down the road. Um, over here, uh, we're not developing anything. Actually, maybe I should do is move to this corner. This is what we're actually building. So we're not covering any of it around this end. That'll be a future, future phase. It sort of just disappears. It's kind of a neutral color. You won't notice, you won't notice it too much. Unless you're thinking about a mural. <laughs> yeah, when you, when you hear about a long blank wall, mm -hmm. you start thinking, yeah, what can be done with it? It might be a little bit too much uh, uh, vegetation to, uh, give it enough time, it might cover not the bit, right? maybe not the, uh, right. the right opportunity. But uh, there, there will be other opportunities. So the city's uh, has a requirement for public art. So as other projects come on board, there's going to be other opportunities. So this isn't necessarily, this is what, these are the opportunities that go along with what we're, our, what's currently funded. So say, for example, if the library came down, down the road, you know, a portion of that cost would be allocated to public art. Um, same goes for any other buildings that we may, may do down the road uh, if it gets funded. Should mention something actually um, important. It may not, it, it won't affect the artist, but one thing I forgot to mention is that if you notice, if you go out there today, you will see um, an existing 40, maybe 40, 50 feet of a swath of, of turf um, that's parallel to the street out there right now. And the reason that we deliberately uh, stayed away from that, not touched it, is that that is the future. Uh, transit corridor, so potentially light rail um, may come down at some someday down the road. So we deliberately uh, maintain the setback and not touch any of that that um, corridor right there. With the exception of this, we had to have a formal entry into the sort of a connection point into the uh, public right of way. <coughs> Other questions? Well, Alvin, thank you very much for all the information and your time. And thank you very much to the bank for and the monitor. Uh, if there are no further questions or discussion on this, then we'll go ahead and conclude the session. I want to thank everybody for their time and participation this afternoon. Thank you. Thank you. Nice. Thanks.